Okay, as I promised you, we were going to talk about resistance. And um, as you know, this is a bigger and bigger problem with antimicrobial therapy is the development of resistance. You know, we think that the main way this happens is that uh, mutations are able to form that are are resistant to the drug and then because they're able to survive and the other other bugs aren't those resist those mutations resistant mutations start to flourish and then you have resistance so um there is some research on how to best avoid resistance patterns um so as you can see this slide shows the probability of resistance uh so 100 percent probability of resistance occurs if you're here um this is again for a fluoroquinolone um, and it shows if you keep the area of the curve for 24 hours over the MIC again over 100 that seems to be the magical number your probability of resistance drops dramatically from about 80 percent down to uh, 10 percent or less um, so it's important not only for eradication and survival to keep this area of the curve to MIC ratio high, but it's also important to um, try to maintain uh, some effectiveness of the drug. So the, the higher getting this magical area of the curve to MIC to be over 100 is important to um, resist um, the development of resistance, as you can see here. Now, if it's a beta-lactamase producing drug, then this becomes more difficult to do. You know, this is not, I have to look up which drug this is. I don't think this is a fluoroquinolone. I think this is a beta-lactam. Um, same thing here. Um, the longer you're on the drug, the duration, days of duration of therapy, the probability of it remaining susceptible goes from one down to very low when the area of the curve over the MIC ratio is less than 100. If the area of the curve to MIC ratio is 100, then you can say, see that it remains uh, very likely that the drug will remain susceptible, or that the bug will remain susceptible. So once again, it's not only uh, to for um, eradication, but it's important for um, decreasing the possibility of resistance to keep these area of the curve to MIC ratios quite high. These next couple of uh, tables here just tell you it's two different tables um, and there's some overlap but it tells you like so for aminoglycosides it's uh, this is a concentration dependent uh, killer and what's most important uh, to look at um, is peak to MIC ratio and area to the curve to MIC ratio. Beta-lactams, as we've mentioned, are all time dependent, so you want the time over the MIC. So you can see that this tells you what we found, is whether it's time dependent or concentration dependent, and then which uh, parameters are best to tell you. And I think this next table is basically the same thing. Um, some of the drugs are a little more specified here. So linazolid is time dependent. Okay, so you can see all the different um, measures that we look at to try to ensure that the uh, concentrations um, are going to give you the best outcomes. So we're going to use some of this in dosing aminoglycosides first. And as you can see, aminoglycosides are concentration dependent. So we're mostly interested in the area to the curve to MIC ratio and the Cmax to MIC ratio. We want to make sure that Cmax to MIC ratio is optimized as well as the area to the curve to MIC ratio. So um, that's what we're going to start with. And we're, so uh, we're going to start doing some aminoglycoside dosing uh, in class. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.